When you're at Epcot, you're not just eating at a theme park, you're eating around the world. So which restaurants are going to offer something new and exciting for you to try? Which ones are going to give you the best variety? And which ones will stretch your dollar? Let's go on a Disney food adventure today on DFV Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. With so many Epcot restaurants to choose from, you're gonna have quite the decision to make for your upcoming Disney World trip. Which foods and snacks and drinks do you need to make number one priority while you're at this park? That's why we're breaking it down for you today to highlight which restaurants are the best for what you're specifically looking for. Now, bonus, if you wanna take a look at our top 10 restaurants for every park in Disney World, make sure to scan the QR code you see on the screen now or head to disneyfoodblog.com slash top 10 restaurants restaurants for a free printable list of the DFB team's best of the best. All right, so if you are looking for something brand new in Epcot, we're going to start with that. Now, we're already bending the rules of our own game here because this restaurant isn't even open yet, but it will be soon. Shiki Sai Sushi Izakaya will be a table service restaurant that offers up a festive dining experience in a shareable izakaya style, which means it'll be a type of casual pub style restaurant that puts an emphasis on drinks and conversations with friends. Now, this is going to be opening very soon in the Japan Pavilion. It's replacing Tokyo. Tokyo Dining. Izakaya menus typically feature small dishes, which is what you can expect from Shiki Side too. Some food options that we've already seen previewed include karage chicken, salmon misayaki, and tomato salad with avocado, as well as an open sushi bar. But what's really going to be cool about this restaurant is how often the menu is going to switch things up. Every month, Shiki Sai will bring a brand new celebration of Japanese food, meaning the specialty menu items here are going to represent a different Japanese seasonal festival. During this dining experience, a cultural representative will guide you through the experience, meaning your meal will be both tasty and educational, just like Epcot. The restaurant will be located in the Japan Pavilion on the second floor above the Mitsukoshi department store in the location of the former Tokyo Dining, like I mentioned. It'll have views of Epcot, the World Showcase Lagoon, and of course, the nightly fireworks. Per the release of this video, we don't have an exact restaurant opening date yet, but we do know Epcot has projected it to open sometime this summer. And since summer is quickly wrapping up here, there's a good possibility we'll see it up and running fairly soon. But we'll continue to keep you updated so you'll know when you can start making reservations. Now, maybe you want some authentic international cuisine in Epcot, right? One of the best parts about World Showcase is how authentic it really is, from architecture to merchandise to music, and of course, the food. So let's check out some of the most authentic table service eats you're gonna find around the pavilions. Cause yes, a lot of the food in the pavilions is gonna be semi-Americanized, right? So first up on the list, we've got Takumi Te over in the Japan Pavilion. The Japan Pavilion's coming up clutch in this video so far, y'all. Takumi Te translates to House of the Artisan. True to its name, the restaurant's got five different rooms where you could potentially be seated that represent natural elements like water, wood, earth, stone, or washi paper. Which, yeah, I don't get that either, but I will Google it and figure it out. For your meal, you're going to be able to order the prefix Kiku Omakase tasting menu with multi-course offerings of sushi, wagyu, shizuku cake, and ceremonial matcha green tea. Or you can go for the plant-based hasu option featuring deep fried tofu, seasonal vegetable tempura, strawberry sorbet, and yes, the ceremonial matcha green tea will still be available for you too. Sounds nice, right? But there are a couple major downsides to this restaurant. First off, there's the price tag that we can't ignore. The omakase tasting menu alone is $250 per person and the plant-based one costs $150. Even the kids menu is still gonna cost $100 per kid. On top of that, the overall experience is long, like a good chunk of your day will be strictly dedicated to dining here. For those who love good food and feel as if food is an integral part of the whole Disney experience, or even if you've been to Epcot before and you're looking to try something new and swanky, then dinner reservations here may be 100% worth it for you. But something tells me your kids might be awfully disappointed if the majority of their park day has to center around eating fancy cuisine, so consider this a once-in-a-lifetime splurge that you can try out with your partner or your food-loving adult friends. Kids are welcome. I'm just not sure they're going to love it. But if your kid did, please let me know in the comments. 
Now, for a cheaper option that's still super authentic to its region, you can make reservations for Spice Road Table in the Morocco Pavilion. This is an underrated tapas-style restaurant where you can order a variety of mix-and-match Mediterranean-inspired small bites, like the hummus with imported olives, mixed grilled skewers, and lamb sliders. Spice Road Table also has a solid variety of specialty beverages, including several different types of mimosas, a mint vodka Sahara spritz, a Moroccan mule with fig vodka, and even non-alcoholic options like the iced mint tea and Moroccan hot tea service. Depending on where you're seated, you might get to sit right up next to the World Showcase Lagoon. You can always try requesting a table closer to the water when you arrive, just in case a spot is available, because it's going to be great views for the fireworks. Or to guarantee a seat next to the water during Epcot's fireworks, Spice Road Table also has a fireworks dining package too. The Spice Road Table dining package includes your choice of two small plates, a dessert platter, and unlimited beverages, all while you enjoy VIP seating for the current nighttime spectacular. Evcot Forever. Now this package costs $72 per adult and $31 per kid. Now over in the Mexico Pavilion, La Hacienda de San Angel, the restaurant that's outside the pavilion, not inside, I know that gets kind of confusing, serves Mexican cuisine in an intricately decorated restaurant that also sits right up close to the World Showcase Lagoon. The goal of the menu here is not to reproduce hearty Tex-Mex, but to offer authentic Mexican flavors straight from the market, including skillets and tacos, fresh corn tortillas, and a variety of margaritas. And if you're here while the Epcot Fireworks Show is happening, you have the chance to watch the show while you dine. Just make sure to make reservations ahead of time and ask your server for a fireworks view seat. Don't say window seat, say fireworks view seat. And the fireworks view seat isn't guaranteed, but it never hurts to ask. Finally, before we move on to our next point, let's swing by the France Pavilion and hit up Chefs de France. Chefs de France is an authentic French bistro featuring eats like French onion soup, a charcuterie board, ratatouille, beef bourguignon, and my personal favorite, Gruyere cheese baked mac and cheese. While this is a great option for those who enjoy French cuisine, it might be tricky for picky eaters to find something they're going to love on this menu. Not to mention, though this restaurant isn't ultra bougie like Takumi Te, it is a tiny bit more upscale, so kids could find it to be a little dull, but I see lots of kids in there all the time. All right, ready for the best pizza in Epcot? There's one pizza place in Epcot that isn't just the best pizza in the park, but the best pizza in pretty much all of Disney World, and that's Via Napoli over in the Italy Pavilion. Now, be careful. The pizza pies here are some of the priciest that you're going to find property-wide. But with that price, you're going to get unique and authentic Neapolitan wood-fired pizzas like the Quattro Formaggi and Prosciutto e Melone pizzas. And yeah, the wood fire part of this pizza is impressive enough as is, but Via Napoli goes the extra mile to also get water they use for the dough imported from a local spring, just like in Italy's Campania region. Like, what? That amount of detail is absolutely mind-blowing. And for those who aren't in the pizza mood, you can also order pastas and meat dishes here too. But authentic eats aren't the only thing we love about this slice of Italy. The atmosphere is impressive too. The dining room has soaring ceilings, which can actually make it a bit loud in here when it's crowded, just to give you a heads up. And they've got those three massive wood-burning ovens named after the three active volcanoes in Italy, Vesuvio, Etna, and Stromboli. During Epcot's busier times of the year, they'll open up Via Napoli's attached pizza window, Pizza El Taglio, to serve up Sicilian-style slices, aka square and thick crust. Not the same as what you're going to get at Via Napoli, but it still provides high-quality pizza for a much cheaper price point. Okay, quick runner up for you here. If you're in Sunshine Seasons, a quick service that I'll talk about more in depth in the next couple of points, I highly recommend picking up one of those pizza rolls. These are the size of your head and the breading is chewy with a touch of garlic. The mozzarella cheese is nicely melted. The pepperoni has the perfect amount of spice to it. Basically, it's a folded up slice of pizza, which works for me. You can order a cheese or pepperoni pizza roll and each will come with a side of pasta salad, which is made with elbow pasta. Italian dressing and a light touch of mayonnaise and mixed with onions, cucumbers, and green and red peppers. All right, ready to talk about comfort food in Epcot? For those who just want to order a hearty plate of really good food that makes you feel all snug and satisfied with each bite, you've got quite a few options to choose from in this park. So let's start on the right side of World Showcase with Le Cellier over in the Canada Pavilion. Le Cellier is housed in a cozy yet slightly cramped wine cellar setting with wooden tables, stone walls, and candle sconces. We return here for those classic comfort eats that we can depend on, like the Canadian cheddar cheese soup, the filet mignon, and the signature poutine. I'll be honest, this is one of my favorite restaurants in Epcot, and I do go here a lot. <laughs> so your kids might not be super thrilled to dine here, but this is definitely one of our favorite places to get a good cut of quality steak on property. Moving right along into the UK pavilion, you'll find the Rosen Crown dining room. 
This is a cozy pub that serves British classics like shepherd's pie and fish and chips, and of course my favorite, the bangers and mash. And there's also a variety of different brews. If you're just looking to grab a quick beer, cocktail, or spirit while you're making your way around World Showcase, you can belly up to the Rose and Crown British pub and order a drink for the road without having to make a reservation. For quick comfort foods, Regal Eagle Smokehouse in the American Adventure Pavilion serves American barbecue inspired by different regions of the country. So think Memphis dry rub pork ribs and Texas beef brisket sandwiches and Kansas City half-smoked chicken. Oh, and the loaded burnt ends fries, but you're definitely going to want to split those with someone because you're going to get a lot of food in one serving. Now, there's plenty of seating indoors as well as some options outside if it's a nice enough day that it won't melt your face off. And much like Rose and Crown, there's a bar here too where you can grab some drinks to wash down your barbecue. We come here not just because we love the familiar flavors, but because we want to support Sam the Eagle. This is his barbecue joint after all, which is why you'll find nods to the Muppets throughout the restaurant. And if you step outside the World Showcase Pavilion and head over to World Nature, more specifically the second floor of the Land Building, then you can eat at my favorite character dining restaurant in all of Disney World. We're still in Comfort Eats here, Garden Grill. There are a few key restaurants why I love this place. Reason one, the restaurant rotates. No, really, like it actually spins while you're inside. It's going to slowly rotate directly over scenes from the Living with the Land boat ride happening down below. Reason number two, I love this place. The options are pretty straightforward. All tables will be served a family style Chippendale harvest. Now you're not eating chipmunks, don't worry. The featured items are garden salad, creamy mashed potatoes, barbecue roasted chicken, berry shortcake. Plus you're gonna have several other comfort food sides that you can share with the whole group. Reason three, you're gonna be able to meet Farmer Mickey, Pluto, Chip and Dale while chowing down. And you'll more than likely get to meet them several times throughout the course of your meal instead of just once or twice. Thanks to the circular shape of the restaurant and how small it is, that makes it easier for these characters to do their rounds multiple times. And reason four, breakfast recently returned here back in June. So if you wanna meet these characters while dining on a spread of cinnamon breakfast loaf, smoked bacon, fruit, eggs, and Mickey shaped waffles, then you can actually eat at this restaurant for cheaper, $42 per adult versus the 55 you'll shell out for lunch and dinner. All right, time to talk about dinner and a show in Epcot. If you need a little excitement alongside your meal, there are two restaurants in Epcot that can provide it. Over in the Germany Pavilion, Beer Garden Restaurant is always ready to celebrate Oktoberfest with you, no matter what time of year you visit. By the way, this is another really good one for comfort food. We didn't put it in that section, but it's a really good one for comfort food too. This place has long tables to accommodate several groups at once and lots of German favorite dishes on their buffet line, like bratwurst and schnitzel and noodle gratin, which is one of my favorite favorite mac and cheeses in Disney World. But the entertainment factor comes from the German performers who showcase authentic Oktoberfest numbers throughout the day with lederhosen and all. And don't be shy, kids. If you're feeling like dancing along with the polka players, there is a dance floor up near the stage where families can groove and sway along to the music. Or you can stay put and shout Prost with beer in hand whenever it's time to do an Oktoberfest cheers. This is definitely an active restaurant where you could be seated next to another family at the very same table because we're all friends during Oktoberfest. So if you're wanting a more private, intimate, and quiet meal somewhere, well, Beer Garden is the opposite of that. <laughs> now, Teppanetto is another restaurant you might enjoy over in the Japan Pavilion, but this one's more interactive. Thanks to the personal chefs here, your food will be cooked right there in front of you, hibachi style. Once again, this is another restaurant where you're more than likely be seated with other families, unless you've got a huge group with you. I think there's about eight people per table. But if you're okay with that, then be prepared for a fun presentation with flipping spatulas and onion volcanoes. Now, speaking of volcanoes, San Angel Inn Restaurante inside the Mexico Pavilion is one of the most picturesque restaurants in all of Epcot and will put you in a dining room with dim mood lighting right up close to the Mesoamerican Pyramid inside the pyramid, where an active volcano bubbles and glows off in the distance. Now, while this restaurant doesn't put on a show, it does put you in the center of some action with the night market behind you and the Grand Fiesta Tour boat ride floating right in front of you. It's often considered a very romantic restaurant, which leads leads us right into the next section of this video. Maybe you want an evening away from the kids. Okay, you might be in Disney World, AKA a place for families to enjoy together, but that doesn't mean you can't enjoy a nice date night away from the kids if you get the chance. If you're looking for a place where you can escape the heat, escape the crowds, and just enjoy an adult drink or two with your partner or your friends, then we've got a few places that could be perfect for you. First up, there's La Cava del Tequila inside the Mexico Pavilion, which is best known for its margaritas and rare tequila offerings. Toward the end of the day, La Cava 
Baba starts to get busier and busier since this place is first come first served. But if you don't mind getting high quality margarita on the fly, La Cava does have a to go window that you can opt for instead. But if you can get a walk up seat here, then sit back, relax, grab yourself a specialty marg and possibly an order of chips and that incredible queso that I love and enjoy. Now, if you're less of a tequila drinker and more of a wine connoisseur, then Tutto Gusto Wine Cellar over in the Italy Pavilion is gonna be more up your alley. This lounge serves over 200 bottles of wine, as well as a selection of different eats that extend from the Tutto Gusto restaurant, which include antipasti, pastas, meat plates, and desserts like tiramisu, cannoli, and sorbet. You can get wine by the glass or the bottle, but either way, you're going to be getting cozy with a little wine cellar setting, which sounds awfully familiar, doesn't it, Le Cellier? Now, if you want to get real fancy, you can book an elegant multi-course meal over in the France Pavilion at Monsieur Paul. You'll find this signature restaurant right above Le Chefs de France. Each meal starts with a glass of champagne for of-age guests and then progresses through five courses via the gastronomic meal of the French. Featuring a selection of hors d'oeuvres, fish, a palate cleansing pear brandy sorbet, dessert, and then kind of a dessert round two with a digestif at the end. Much like Takumi Te, you're going to be paying a pretty penny to dine here. It's $195 per person in case you're wondering how pretty that penny needs to be. But this is one of the quieter, fancier restaurants that you'll encounter inside Epcot, especially since kids under 10 aren't allowed to dine here. Yeah, that's a brand new rule, y'all. There is a dress code that you'll need to adhere to here as well if you make reservations, which isn't too formal or anything, but you're not going to be able to wear your flip-flops and ripped jeans. So plan on packing something dressier to go along with your fancy date night inside the city of love. Now, what about if you are traveling with kids and you can't wait to eat with them? Let's talk about what restaurants parents might want to prioritize so the whole family can enjoy them together. These table service restaurants are known for their fun and whimsical and immersive dining rooms, where you can still be thoroughly entertained even if you're not riding a ride. The newest table service restaurant in Epcot, located right next to Mission Space, is Space 220. It's a dining experience that's all about the atmosphere and making sure you stay immersed in this realm from start to finish. Space 220 takes you up, up, and away into space, 220 miles above Epcot to be exact, and lets you dine inside the Centauri Space Station while you look at those ginormous windows and that expansive galaxy that surrounds you throughout your meal. The windows are ever-changing, so you never know when you might see an astronaut or other spacecraft craft float on past. The menus here include prefix pricing for both lunch and dinner, which can be good if you already planned on eating multiple courses. But if you're someone who usually only orders a main entree, then Space 220 kind of puts you in a bind and makes you pay for options like appetizers and desserts, whether you want them or not. However, if you'd rather just munch on an app or two and maybe order a cocktail while you enjoy those massive intergalactic views, then you can always try making a reservation for the Space 220 Lounge instead. You won't get the full prefix menu here, but instead you'll be able to order off a select a la carte menu of flight bites while still enjoying the out of this world views. Now this next restaurant's a bit controversial to put in a best of video, but I've got to mention Coral Reef tucked behind the seas with Nemo and friends. The theming here is gorgeous and never boring because you're always going to be surrounded by thousands of fish. And that's because the restaurant is lined with massive picture windows looking into a giant indoor living seas aquarium. So if you're just looking for a nice sit down meal in the AC that'll appeal to squirmier kiddos, Coral Reef Restaurant can give you the vibes you're after. But honestly, this restaurant is hit and miss when it comes to quality of the food. If you're on the hunt for really good seafood in Disney, you'd probably be better off over at Disney Springs at the Boathouse or Paddlefish, and you'd even be better off at the Yorkshire County Fish Shop over in the UK Pavilion, which is a quick service window outside Rose and Crown that just serves fish and chips. But Regardless, the fish are colorful and cute and might keep your kids entertained for long enough that you can have a peaceful lunch or dinner without worrying about them getting restless. Now, how about Akershus Royal Banquet Hall over in the Norway Pavilion? This offers a princess storybook dining experience where kids can meet a bunch of princesses like Snow White, Jasmine, Belle, Tiana, Princess Aurora, Cinderella, Ariel. You never know who's going to be there. If you're struggling to get reservations for Cinderella's Royal Table in Magic Kingdom, then the Royal Banquet Hall is a solid plan B that'll still let your kid meet their heroes without you having to wait in line for them all day long. Akershus Royal Banquet Hall features an all-you-care-to-enjoy family-style platter featuring, among other dishes, traditional Norwegian meatballs, a chicken and dumplings, and more familiar favorites like mashed potatoes and gravy, grilled salmon, mac and cheese, etc. 
You can also book a reservation for breakfast here too, which includes a pastry assortment and Norwegian waffles, along with classics like eggs, bacon, and sausage. And naturally, I gotta give one more quick shout out to Garden Grill for its characters, unique rotational dining room setup, and accessible eats that everyone's gonna enjoy, picky and adventurous eaters alike. If you've got kids, it's a good idea. So what about those who want some unique and inexpensive options, right? So there are five quick service locations that I wanna highlight for you that'll not only help save you money by eating there instead of at a sit down restaurant, but they'll also provide you with tasty adventurous meals that don't strictly consist of chicken tenders and hot dogs. First up on the list, we've got Crepes en Porter, which is a counter service creperie located in the France Pavilion. There are a variety of different options you can choose from here, like the creme of brie cheese galette, the ratatouille galette, FYI, the galettes are the savory ones. They're made with a buckwheat flour, and then they've got the crepes, which are the sweet ones. And they've got all kinds of crepes. They've got red berries, they've got a chocolate hazelnut, they've just got the butter and sugar crepe. And you can also order a variety of on-the-go hard ciders here of the dry and sweet variety. Big downfall of this place is finding a place to eat your crepes, since you'll more than likely have to secure one of those standing tables nearby. But you may be able to find limited seating around the gazebo area and near the perfume shop just outside of the Ratatouille expansion, though these are first come, first serve. Also over in the France Pavilion, you can grab a bite at Layal Boulangerie Patisserie. That's a bakery full of delicious eats and treats like quiche and pastries and sandwiches and macarons and soups and cappuccinos and full baguettes fresh from the oven that are less than five bucks. The seating for Layal is also pretty limited, though you'll have some indoor seating you might be able to secure, maybe, but more than likely you'll need to take your food to go. That being said, there are a few tables outside, but there are definitely more inside. Okay, let's give France a break for a minute and head back to the Japan Pavilion for a speedy meal at Katsura Grill, where you're gonna be able to order items like chicken teriyaki, sushi combos, and udon or ramen bowls. The restaurant is a pretty basic setup on the inside, but if you choose to dine outside, you can plop yourself down in the garden area, which includes a red footbridge, koi ponds, overhead lanterns. It's basically what everybody wants their backyard to look like, right? I love it up there. Outside of the World Showcase, you can lean on Connections Eatery and Cafe to not only get your coffee fix, but also hook you up with dishes inspired by global flavors, as well as some more American eats. Now, by global flavors, I mean things like margarita pizza, Madagascar vanilla milkshake, liege waffles, General So chicken salad, and the French bistro burger topped with bacon, brie, mushroom, and Dijon mayonnaise. So still pretty Americanized, but maybe some flavors from global locations. Unlike France Pavilion's quick service options, you're gonna find tons of seating here, but you won't be able to snag a table unless you've already ordered your food. And no, just a plain old cup of Starbucks coffee doesn't count. Finally, let's give Refreshment Port its time to shine because it doesn't get as much attention as it deserves. Refreshment Port is a kiosk you'll find right outside the Canada Pavilion. It offers standard poutine during the year and more often than not seasonal poutines come in during the Epcot festivals. It also has standard and seasonal soft serve ice creams. And if your kids really are missing out on their chicken nugs, you can find chicken nugs and fries here too. Okay, so what happens if you didn't make advanced dining reservations for your trip, but you realize once you're there that you really need to sit down in the AC for a little bit? Well, the My Disney Experience app might be able to hook you up with last minute reservations where they're still available. All you gotta do is tap on the tip board, select the dining tab, change the park to Epcot, and browse the different restaurants that might still say you can make a reservation the day of your visit. Now, being able to book a restaurant on the fly isn't always a guarantee, especially if you're visiting during those very, very busy times of year. More than likely, you're not gonna see too many last minute tables pop up for Space 220, for example. Though it's not impossible, I got one a couple weeks ago. If you're looking for a restaurant you can depend on when you're in a last minute bind, there are two that usually have more day of ability than not. The first is La Creperie de Paris, which is the table service sibling of Crepes I Importer. Again, this is a restaurant that serves sweet crepes and savory galettes, but instead of taking it with you, you'll be able to sit down for a spell and savor it. Now, not gonna lie, Creperie gets mixed reviews across the board. Some love how it's one of the most affordable table service locations in Epcot with both a la carte options and a prefix menu, which comes with your choice of soup of the day or salad maison, one galette and a glass of hard cider, soda or juice, and your choice of one dessert crepe, all for around $40. But others find this restaurant to be pretty drab when it comes to theming. 
Regardless of the interior, La Creperie continues to be a pretty reliable restaurant that'll welcome you in last minute when you're in need of a satisfying meal away from the heat. Now we haven't talked too much about the China Pavilion dining options yet, so let's drop into Nine Dragons restaurant to check out their cuisine. Unlike La Creperie, the setup inside is gorgeous, but probably reminiscent of your Chinese-inspired restaurant that you have back in your hometown. And while not every item on the menu knocks it out of the ballpark, there are a few standout dishes here, like the house-made cheesy crab wontons, the Kowloon spare ribs, and my personal favorite, the salt and pepper shrimp with spinach noodles. Honestly, this restaurant may not be your favorite of the trip, but then again, it could be. After all, the service is quick, the setting is lovely, the cast members are wonderful, and the portions are satisfying. So let's say you've got a sweet tooth like I do. It is time to dig into the sugary stuff. Now this is one of my favorite parts of the video because Epcot does their desserts really well. We'll start off with my absolute favorite dessert shop first because I'm too excited and I want to eat there right now. And that's Caramel Kusha in the Germany Pavilion. You will smell this fantastic spot before you see it. And when you step inside, it's all sugary, buttery goodness from there. Everything sold at this little bakery is sweet. So don't come in looking for a savory snack. And what does this place special in? I'll give you three guesses, but the first two don't count. You got it. Caramel. You can order caramel popcorn, butter bars, cupcakes, gingerbread salted caramel buttercream cookie sandwiches. During the holiday season, though right now we've got this snickerdoodle salted caramel buttercream cookie sandwich. And so much fresh caramel. But keep in mind these two crucial things before you visit. There's no indoor seating here, but you will be able to find nearby standing tables and a couple of sit down tables over in the middle of the Germany pavilion if you don't want to munch and walk. And two, the caramel popcorn is not part of the refillable popcorn bucket deal. You will have to pay full price for each bag you get. However, you can find refillable maple popcorn over in the Canada Pavilion at their popcorn cart if you're looking for a sweet popcorn snack for less money. All right, time to head back to France. More specifically, we are heading to La Artisan de Glace next for their 16 at flavors of house-made ice cream and sorbet. One of the treats we order over and over again for science is the brioche ice cream sandwich, the croque glace, which is warm, cold, crispy, chewy, sweet sandwich toasted in a panini press thingamabob and it's heavenly. But those macaron ice cream sandwiches you'll also find here are super tempting as well. And those change out seasonally usually. For the 21 plus crowd, you might want to order an ice cream martini instead. The choice is yours for the making. Now a rather overlooked bakery stop inside the World Showcase rests in the Morocco Pavilion, Oasis Sweets and Sips. Items you're going to find here are things like baklava, almond crescent cookies, and unique alcoholic and non-alcoholic mixed drinks. Granted, I'd still probably prefer a cocktail or other alcoholic beverage in the France or Mexico pavilion if given the choice, but if you want to shake things up a little bit on your next trip and try something new, you may want to give this little slice of Morocco a chance. P.S. That non-alcoholic frozen mint tea goes hard for absolutely no reason. Just saying. Now, for drinks and unique pastry options, you can try Kringla Bakery Og Cafe in the Norway Pavilion before or after you ride Frozen Ever After. This bakery features plenty of unique and extremely popular sweet treats like the school bread, which is a sweet roll filled with custard and dipped in coconut and icing, the apple cake, which is an apple cake with caramel drizzle, and the Norwegian Kringla, which is a pretzel-shaped pastry with assorted toppings like almonds or chocolate. You can also pick up either a hot or frozen Viking coffee here, which is made with Bailey's Irish cream and Kimura coffee liqueur. But if you're not in the mood for booze, that's all right. You can try the Kristoff Cafe instead, which is another frozen coffee drizzled with coffee chocolate sauce and garnished with coffee chocolate crunch. And finally, let's go back to the Japan Pavilion one more time to grab a frozen treat at Kabuki Cafe. This is where you're going to find Kakigori, aka shaved ice topped with fruit syrup and or sweet milk. If you're in the mood for something savory to go along with your shave ice, Kabuki Cafe also has a small selection of sushi for you to choose from. Nothing too fancy, just options like California rolls and nigiri combos, but you can still get them on the go for around six bucks. And if the kakigori and sushi don't sell ya, then you might want to stop by here for a frozen beer since it's one of the very few places you're going to be able to find this. The beer itself isn't what's frozen, but wouldn't that be wild if it was? Instead, the head on the glass is super aerated and chilled with a protective foam on top that works as essentially a mini refrigerator for the beer, keeping the beer colder for longer. And that's an absolute game changer for those who can't stand drinking the rest of their beer once it gets warm. 
Okay, I get it. Epcot's food options can be a lot to process. So much so that you sometimes just wanna go the easy route. So if that's the case for you, here are some options that tend to specialize in just a few things to help cure your indecisiveness. I've got two places in the Mexico Pavilion for you, and that's Chosa de Margarita and La Cantina de San Angel. Chosa is another one-stop margarita spot, but with more limited variety of pre-mixed options. And if you need some food to go along with your tequila, you've typically got three different options to choose from here. The tacos de cochinita, pulled pork, the empanada de barbacoa, beef, and the tostadas de pollo, chicken. This marg kiosk doesn't have any outdoor or indoor seating, but if you go to La Cantina de San Angel, you'll find covered seating right up next to the World Showcase Lagoon, as well as a limited menu of tasty Mexican-inspired eats like empanadas, churros, and tacos. Now, tucked into the back of the Germany Pavilion, Summerfest is where you're going to find the traditional giant pretzels, bratwursts, and cold beer. This is also going to be where you can find that pretzel bread pudding you'll find us raving over because it's such a dense and satisfyingly sweet snack for less than five bucks. Meanwhile, over at Joy of Tea in the China Pavilion, you're going to find a kiosk that takes their tea very seriously. This is where you'll find items like boba and tea-based cocktails and $5 pork egg rolls because any time can be egg roll time. And let's not forget about the Yorkshire County Fish Shop I mentioned earlier. Over in the UK Pavilion, that serves up a nice filling basket of fish and chips year-round. But that's it, and that's what we love about it. Okay, let's flip the script now. Let's say you want as many options at your fingertips as possible. Where do you go then? Sunshine Seasons is a great place to start. Remember, this is the one on the bottom floor of the Land Building and offers a food court-like dining experience to satisfy a whole lot of different palates. This quick service has choices for picky eaters like those pizza rolls and grilled chicken. And adventurous eaters too, they've got Asian vegetable noodle salad, Mongolian beef plate. I know it's not that adventurous, but this is Disney World. There are even options for plant-based eaters like vegetable korma and a Mediterranean sandwich. And don't forget to check out their dessert case too. The turtle brownie is severely underrated and deserves all the love. I know I say it all the time, but the amount of caramel on that thing is unbelievable. Okay, now for the completely unique part of Epcot's dining options, those festival foods. Along with all these quick services and sit-down restaurants, you've also got dozens upon dozens of festival booths that you can potentially try too. Each year, Epcot hosts four different festivals. Festival of the Arts, Flower and Garden, Food and Wine, and Festival of the Holidays. Along with each festival's exclusive entertainment options and merchandise, they're going to provide you with tons of different outdoor kitchens to try with savory snacks and sweet treats and unique beverages. For the most part, the food you're going to find at these festival booths will be smaller portions, ranging around $5 to $10 each, meaning you can sample multiple booths without worrying about filling up on just one. But even if you're someone who loves having a variety of choices at all times, all the different options featured during these fests can still be pretty overwhelming, which is why we have our DFB Festival Guides on dfbstore.com to help you out. These guides are designed to maximize your time and money during whichever Epcot festival you're visiting, and you can save money on your digital guidebook purchase by typing in code YouTube before you check out. Also, you know, we also do a best of the fest because we go to the festivals and eat all the food on day one and we have a best of the fest out for you on the blog. It's out that night and usually for YouTube, we need one day processing time for our editors to actually get all those videos together and then we'll have a best of the fest here on the DFB Guide YouTube channel as well. All right, I think we've done it. And I'm sure that there are a few places you wanna make sure that your fellow viewers know about. So definitely drop them in the comments if you've got some more Epcot locations that you absolutely adore. So thanks for traveling around the world with me today. And don't forget, if you want a full list of our top 10 Disney World restaurants for each park, go ahead and send us your name and email at disneyfoodblog.com slash top 10 restaurants. We'll get the PDF sent to your inbox in a heartbeat. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.